So the Royal Society asked me to make a brief presentation about my work and I will focus on my work in uh, speech transmission. When I started in that area, things were still analog. Analog transmission has a number of disadvantages. First of all, the noise accumulates over distance, so you often get a very noisy result. It's difficult to encrypt analog signals. It's almost impossible to reduce the bandwidth, so it's not, not so nice. So what you do is uh, you use digital telephony instead, where you first convert the signal to a sequence of numbers, a um, digital signal, and typically that uh, such signals have 16,000 uh, samples per second for speech or approximately 250,000 sample bits uh, per second. Now you have, to, that, that's a lot of bits, but now you have things in a, in a nice format. You can um, um, reduce the bit rate by uh, doing uh, compression uh, of the signal. You can uh, do encryption of the digital signal, and you can also um, uh, protect it against uh, um, noisy, uh, noisy channels. In general, particularly if you use mobile telephony, the phone with that moved away from a particular location, and that means that you have uh, often a noisy environment for the uh, input to the telephone, so you also need noise suppression. I worked on all these topics in, uh, in, during my career. But let's look at uh, compression in particular. So if we look at compression, there are essentially two methods available to us. The first one is the ubiquitous one at the moment, and that uh, is to just remove redundancy from the signal and then quantize it. So you want to remove any information that is, has already been transmitted before from uh, what you're transmitting now. The other option is to just synthesize a similar sounding speech signal from scratch. So you just transmit some information about the signal and then you synthesize it from scratch. That's not yet ubiquitous. It's quite difficult, requires a very good signal, uh, but it's more efficient. Um, yeah. now let's first look at the redundancy removal. What would you do? Well, you have the sequence of, of numbers and basically what you can do is you can predict from the previous set of numbers that you have seen um, the next number. And then what you do, uh, this prediction, you subtract it from that next number. So now what you're left with is the part that you could not predict. That's the non-redundant part of the signal. And that part that you're left with, that's called the prediction error or residual. We see that in that picture here, you delay the signal, you predict the next sample, and then you subtract it from the speech signal to get this residual signal. To uh, reconstruct the signal, you just uh, run the system in reverse. You put in the prediction residual, you add the predicted value from the past reconstructed signal, and you get the new reconstructed signal. And this running in reverse is called an autoregressive model. Now, when you look at this picture, then you see that um, we now have two things to transmit, actually, because on the one hand, we have this prediction residual, but on the other hand, we also have to transmit information about what the predictor itself is. And so then the question comes up, how many bits do you spend on one and on the other? And we did some theoretical work on that and showed that if you uh, work it all out, that the rate that you spend on the model is independent of the overall rate. That's what you see in the picture here. At the bottom, you see the distortion, low distortion, so good quality is on the left, and uh, high rate is uh, high up. Uh, and you see that the, the model rate contribution is fixed uh, for a relatively low distortion. And the total rate goes up because you still spend more and more bits on the uh, prediction residual. That's of course a useful result to have and that is entirely consistent with uh, practical uh, results. You can confirm the results with uh, experiments. Now, in practice, we do things a little bit uh, differently than, than I just described. We often just throw away the encoder altogether, but we just use this model that we obtained, this autoregressive model for the decoder to build the entire coder. And the way we do that is we have 
a set of possible um, prediction error signals available to us in a code book, which is known to both the encoder and the decoder. We push the, all these code book entries through the autoregressive model, and then we compare the outcomes to the original signal and we pick the best one. And then we transmit the index for the best one. And at the decoder, we uh, simply uh, push that uh, particular code book entry through the autoregressive model to get the reconstructed speech signal. That, that works well, but we can do better than that. And we can do better than that by adding yet another stage. And what we do then is we don't uh, try to match the original signal, but the opportunistically the best matching modified signal from a set of modified signals that um, sound the same as the original signal. Now this trick uh, we invented uh, in the 1990s and uh, then we proceeded to build a coder with that, and that coder became the North American mobile phone standard after uh, comparison with competing systems. About 10 or 15 years later, uh, a worldwide standard, a new worldwide standard was defined, and that's the standard that you now have in your mobile phone that sits on your desk or in your pocket. And uh, that still has this uh, basic architecture in there that we developed in the 1990s. Now, uh, I mentioned to you that there are two different ways of uh, doing uh, speech transmission. And now let's look at the second one, which is uh, synthesizing the signal from scratch. Now we can look at that uh, from the same perspective. So let's look again at this uh, uh, autoregressive model that we have at the decoder. We take uh, the past uh, reconstructed signal, uh, add to that the prediction residual, and we get the next signal sample out. Now, this prediction residual uh, had all the redundancy removed from it if things went well. So that means it's actually just noise, right? And if you listen to it, it does sound like noise. So if you would, uh, so then the question comes up, uh, what happens if I just uh, replace that prediction residual by noise? Well, it, it, it does sound like speech, but it is not that good. So, it still leaves you with the question, well, if we make this predictor better, could we uh, do a better job? And the answer is yes. If you look at this in, in more detail, you would see that this is actually sort of a way to uh, sample from an, a uh, um, distribution of the next sample. And this distribution is set by the predictor. So if we then use a more sophisticated machine learning based method to build this predictor, then uh, we can build a very good sounding system. This is the principle of WaveNet, uh, which is indeed a much more complicated model than the models that we use uh, in the coders that you have in your phone, for example. Uh, we now use 10 million parameters instead of just 10. And we can reconstruct uh, a signal. We can synthesize a signal from that, I should say, with that. That sounds almost exactly the same as the signal that uh, uh, was transmitted from the, uh, uh, the far end. We have to train these systems on a very large database, these 10 million parameters to find them. But uh, the end result is that uh, we can code uh, speech now at say about three kilobits per second, maybe four kilobits per second with a quality that is uh, as good as it was before at 25 or 30 kilobits per second. So we've reduced the information rate by a factor of 10. We were the first to, to build such a system in, in 2018. And that brings me to the end of uh, this presentation. Uh, the impression that I would like you to leave you with is that uh, speech and audio compression is everywhere. It's in your phone, it's in YouTube, it's in your television, it's everywhere. And uh, if you look at the history, uh, well, there was one first uh, big revolution of going from analog to digital. And it looks like what we are uh, seeing now is a second revolution where we go from um, digital or coded uh, signals that, that uh, removed redundancy to, to um, uh, reconstructions or to the synthesis of signals from, from scratch. Now, that is much more efficient in terms of rate. It's also something where uh, we can manipulate the signal much better so we can make you sound like something else, someone else. Um, yeah, that's all I uh, wanted to tell you. I thank you for your attention and I wish you a good day.